Hi, welcome to Steve's Garage. I'm Steve, this is my garage. I wanna show you something. I bought a Tesla. Nice, hey? Actually, I bought a blue one and it's full size just outside. And in fact, I bought the cheapest, slowest Tesla around. Let's go take a look. <coughs> oh, jeez. Always wait until the door's totally open before trying to go out and clean up your garage. Turns out I'm not the only one who bought a Tesla. Also, my buddy Manny did. I received the link from my friend, the necklace Steve. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. He's my ex colleague engineer and a very talented photographer. Make sure to check his art. Necklace Steve. Necklace Steve. Why does he call me Necklace Steve? He's got a neck. Yeah, maybe your necklace, Medi. <sighs> Gotta work on my trash talk. Hi, look what I bought. <laughs> I bought a Tesla. <laughs> so Betty bought a Tesla too. Turns out we both cheaped out, but the slowest, cheapest Tesla available. Well, to be totally truthful, we bought the blue one and the blue one cost $1,300 more than the white one. I guess blue pigment costs a lot more. So I guess you win, Betty. You're cheaper than I am. So I've owned it about six months now. Thought I'd go through some of the things that I found surprising, a bit different, things that maybe have not recovered in other videos. Things that people considering buying a Tesla might be interested in knowing. I had it for three months now. So, madman many, we've owned ours three months longer than you have. All right, just to be upfront, I'm not a car guy, never have been. Didn't do all the research and all the different types and models and cars. I don't really keep up to date. Um, so these are just impressions of somebody, an average guy, who drives a cartoon from work. Things that I figured were noteworthy. Well, let me tell you, I'm not a car person. So it looks like we have this in common, Mitty. Hey, wait a minute. What's that I see there? Aha. So because you bought yours later than ours, you got all the upgraded features. Had we bought our car one month later, we would have got all those extra new features as well. Most of them are not a big deal. Um, the main thing that I really liked is the, the chrome, the chrome delete, they call it. On Mitty's car, you'll notice it's all black. And we got the chrome highlights. I like the black better. Not the end of the world, but... Uh, wish I'd known. As far as cars go, Tesla's different. I've always driven internal combustion engine cars. Switching from that to an electric vehicle is a big change. I've driven a few rental hybrids. Uh, I've driven a Nissan Leaf electric vehicle. The driving experience of Tesla is a little bit different. I've always been a computer guy. Still remember those fond days playing on my Commodore 64 program. Commodore 64K memory at a price that will put a computer in every home, business, and school anyway, years. Maybe before. driving a Tesla is about as close as you can get is to getting inside and driving your computer. I don't know if that makes sense. But we picked it up. The salesman said, think of it as a cell phone on wheels. And I think he's right. At the time of the video, this is the cheapest Tesla, standard range plus. We did pay extra for the blue, $1,300 extra. Red is an extra $2,600. White is the actual cheapest. Amazing how much more blue pigment costs on red paint. Crazy! There's a bunch of videos on the, on the internet for Teslas. I'm not gonna go through a lot of details and just a few items that I think are worth mentioning. Also, look at this. A week into owning this thing. Rock chips already. Oh. Fortunately, Tesla sells a paint kit, touch-up paint kit. We'll wait till some warmer weather and I'll try to touch this up and see how that goes. Also, this just happened the other day. Not sure who or how, but I guess they had their keys protruding out the side of their pocket while they walked really close to my car. It's a really long scratch. <sighs> so one thing I want to say is buying a Tesla is a very different process from buying any other car from another dealership. There's zero pressure to buy. You go in, they just tell you about it. You take it for a test drive. In fact, there's almost negative pressure to buy. I think there's a long lineup of people waiting to buy Tesla. So if you're not interested, the next person walking in the door waiting, they'll buy it. It's quite a good process. No pressure. Test it out. If you like it, you buy it. If you don't, no big deal. One other thing about buying a Tesla, there's a referral program. It's a bit of a pyramid scheme. When you buy a car, you get a code. If a friend buys a car, they use your code. You get extra bonuses. We got 15,000 supercharger kilometers which we're not even using because we charge at home. The more people that use your code, the more bonuses both people, both parties get, the person buying and the person's code. So if you're interested in buying a Tesla, consider using my code. Once we bought the Tesla, the guy that was selling to us says, you got to think of it kind of as a cell phone with wheels. 
And the more I use the car and the more I think about it, the more really it is true. Everything's based on the screen. Everything goes through menus, um, menus, submenus. If you're comfortable using your phone, you're going to adapt to this very quickly. Things are fairly logically laid out and it's easy to get to the stuff you need to. Being a cell phone with wheels comes with all the benefits of a cell phone, meaning over the air updates, the software gets updated, things get better and better over time. Also comes with some of the drawbacks. I know when we first got the car, we connect to our phone. So the idea is when you walk up to the car, it connects to your phone, automatically unlocks for you. Um, that didn't work all the time. And I'd walk up to the car, it'd be locked. Even though I'm standing right next to it, I have to wait for the phone to connect. And then you have to take your phone out and do it manually. You can start the Tesla app. But of course, it takes some time. And it turns out by the time I got to the Tesla app, the car would unlock anyways. And of course, this would inevitably always happen in the rain. I'd have things in my left hand, so I'd have to switch hands and pull the phone out. So it was always a bit of a pain. Often what happens is as I get my phone, I finally switch hands, I get the phone out of my pocket, and then the car unlocks. So I have to put the phone back in the trunk. And what I have found, in fact, after there's been a couple car updates, this hasn't happened nearly as often. So I think they've improved something in the software. One of the benefits. The auto lock feature works quite well. Just close it and walk away. And when your phone disconnects, the car will lock. Let's talk about mud flaps. I know you're interested. These seemed like a great accessory at the time. Uh, we lived in Lower Mainland, lots of rain. I thought this would help protect the underside of the car. You buy them on the Tesla webpage, easy to install, straightforward instructions. All that point of view is great. However, the only problem is but an inch and a quarter clearance. That means every tiny little bump, this scrapes. Now, it's very flexible. It's not doing any damage. It does wear at the bottom, not a big deal. The problem, main problem is every time you hit a bump or whatever, you hear it inside the car and people outside the car. It feels like the bottom is scraping. It sounds terrible. I wouldn't recommend getting the left laps. The frunk is fun, mostly just to say frunk. Open the app, click on the button, pops it open. Not a lot of storage space, but enough room for a backpack and that kind of thing. It's a little bit clumsy to close, but once you get the hang of it, it works just fine. The doors are great. Love the smooth finish here. Push and pull, that's all it takes to it. You'll notice the window, as soon as you open, the window drops down. That's because the window actually tucks up underneath to help with the rain. To open it from the inside, of course, there's a button right here. Press the button. The window goes down and the door gets open and then you just push it out. Works quite well. There's also a manual override right here, relatively well hidden, but if you pull on it, it will manually open the door. But you heard the beep and you get a warning. They don't want you doing that because it doesn't get a chance to pull down the window before it opens the door. It might hurt the trim. Really like the clean look of the dashboard. No lights. Really everything's on the screen. One thing I really notice is at night, um, you're used to, when you're driving a normal car, there's usually lights all around over here. Nothing at all. Everything's from the screen. So at night it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I quite like it. One thing we did do, as you can see, this here, this is normally where the, the wood paneling goes on all the Teslas. We covered it up. I have another video showing me covering it up. I quite like the look afterwards. I think the wood paneling is a bit out of place. Some people really like it. So be it. I like the, the flat black look better. Quick example of the control system. Hit the little fan symbol and here's all your vents. Just drag your finger around to point where you want the vent to point. Up the fan speed. You can hear the fans turn on. Quite easy to use. And in fact, you can just use your split and then you can have on each side go in two different directions. One thing we didn't realize when buying the Tesla, all Teslas come with a data plan, just like your cell phone. Now it's only $16 a month for unlimited data. Pretty good deal, but no, you can't tether your phone to the Tesla. It's only data for the Tesla's use only. Mostly in maps, that sort of thing. But also for the entertainment. 
Netflix, YouTube, that sort of thing. Nice screen, comfortable seats, can be heated seats. Um, so really you have your mini drive-in theater. Now, Maniac Medi, in your video you showed your car having troubles running YouTube. Try to go to YouTube. There you go. And it keeps turning and turning. Kids are yelling in the back seat. Dad, when will the movie start? Couldn't Tesla spend like $50 more and get a decent processor for the display? And blame it on the weakest processor. Medi, Medi, Medi. You should know better than this. You may be right about the processor, but having a slow things like YouTube and or Netflix, try Netflix. It's not the processor, it's the, the data, it's the internet connection that's taking the time. So no matter, even if you have the fastest processor in there possible, you're still reliant on connecting to the internet, the data throughput, cell phone network, all that kind of stuff. I received a link from my friend, the necklace, Steve. Hey! <laughs> Sorry, Steve. He's You're laughing at me. He's a colleague, engineer, and a very talented photographer. Make sure to check his art. Anyway, the web... We found that Netflix and YouTube takes, a, takes, what, 10, 20 seconds to start up. Once it's going, it works just fine. And although we have been parked in different places where the cell reception isn't very good and we have all kinds of difficulties just like you have. Maybe because you're inside your garage and you're having a little bit of an issue. Manny, maybe you should try and fix it. And use, use a full, full bridge, bridge rectifier! rectifier! Oh, I'm just kidding. Full bridge rectifier isn't gonna work. The car is based on DC. Rectifiers are only useful for AC. Hmm, I should know better. Another thing I've noticed is that the programmers that work at Tesla, they have a sense of humor. Of course, you could, you could locate where you want it, the sound. You can also attach it to your horn if you'd like. So the car comes with two key cards. This is effectively your key to the car, but in addition, you can attach via Bluetooth your cell phones, and that's really what I use for primarily for getting in and out of the car. So each card or each cell phone that's connected, the car remembers all your preferences, how you want the car to, to feel, how much regenerative braking you want it to use, what steering mode, acceleration, all that kind of stuff. Whether you want the car to feel like a more internal combustion engine car, whereas when you let your foot off the gas, it maintains the speed, um, or maybe if you let your foot off the brake, it eases forward, that kind of thing. I've got mine set on the maximum regenerative braking, um, and I find it's way more fun to drive. Effectively, you put your foot on the gas pedal, and when you want to slow down, you just ease off on the gas pedal, and then when you let go, the car just rolls to a stop. So you can actually drive without touching the brake at all. But of course, at any time, if you need to stop quickly, the brake's always there. We have the lowest level of the autopilot, same as Medi. Let's put it in the autopilot. There we go. See, it is stopping for the red light. It sees the red light and shows it. Well, I hope it doesn't crash into anything. Hey, wait, Medi, mine doesn't do that. You need the full self-driving package to do that. You, you didn't buy the cheapest Tesla. And hey, one other thing, you're driving with a cell phone in your hand? What are you thinking? Every time the light turns green, I have to command it to go. I mean, what's the point of self-driving then? I have to move the steering wheel again. Ding! So Forget about aggressive drivers. Just pay attention to the road! All right, because it cheaped out, I have the lowest level of driving assistance available on a Tesla, which means you have adaptive cruise control and lane keeping. Cruise control is basically what you'd expect. It maintains your speed, except if there's somebody in front of you, then it maintains the speed or matches the speed of the car in front of you, which I really like. To engage the cruise control, you just tap once down on the, the gear shift. Well, I guess it isn't really a gear shift. Foot off the gas pedal, maintain speed. And you can see we're approaching other vehicles here. It'll start braking all by itself. It's slowing down now, here we go and it'll stop behind them, and then when they start to go, the car will pick up and follow the speed of the car in front of you. I find the adaptive speed control works quite well. 
and you can adjust the distance that you follow the car in front of you by using the right scroll wheel. You can go to one car length, two car lengths, three car lengths. I leave it on three car lengths because I don't want to be too aggressive. If you are a crazy aggressive driver, get off the road. And also if you're in a stretch like this, you can engage the lane keeping. You just pull down twice on the shift. Now the car is maintaining the speed and it's maintaining right in the center of the, of the lane, you can tell here. And if you let go for too long, eventually the car tells you how to put your hand on your steering wheel. Medi does the ding thing. It's asking me to move the steering wheel a little bit. Ding! There we go. I have to move the steering wheel again. There we go. I have to move the steering wheel again. Ding! 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 Now Medi, you don't have to do ding. I find I just put my hand on the bottom of the steering wheel. Uh, and that's it gives it a, the car enough resistance so it knows you're holding on to it and usually I just rest like this and away it goes. I find this has the advantage you can feel the car turn. It feels a bit more comfortable when you do that too. When you're in this mode, if you turn on the turn signal, then it'll immediately disengage the lane keeping, but it'll still maintain the speed control. If you tap on the brakes, it'll disengage both and then you have full control of the car again. Also, if you're driving like this and if you force the steering wheel one way or the other for steer, it'll automatically disengage as well. So you can take control of the car at any time very quickly. I find in this mode, driving to and from work on the freeway or a highway, it's much more relaxing. You can pay attention more to what's going on around sort of the big picture instead of micromanaging the speed and the steering and works quite well. Self-driving came for free for three months. Otherwise you would have to pay $10,000 for it anyway. Ah, okay, I understand. You got a free month. Well, I guess that's another advantage of buying your car three months after we bought ours. If you tap down the, uh, the shift four times. Rainbow Road. It's some cowbell. So if you ever have a fever, just tap four times. Also, when you're in the cruise control mode, you can see it's set at 80. The right scroll wheel, if you just do, you can always just click it up slowly, well, one kilometer an hour at a time. If you just sort of swing your thumb across there, it goes up at five kilometers an hour each time. As I said before, I'm not really a car guy, but, uh, the base Model 3 that we're driving here goes from 0 to 100 in 5.3 seconds, I think. I don't think that's crazy acceleration as far as sports cars go, but it's a hell of a lot faster than anything I've driven before. A lot faster than my old Honda Fit or my uh, F-150 truck. The thing with the acceleration is there immediately. If you're on a freeway, and if you're going 70 or 80 and you need to pass somebody, that acceleration of the torque is right with you at that speed as well. So I find it a very fun car to drive. Charging. Car comes standard with a 120 volt, 15 amp, plug into any outlet in your house plug. Works just fine. Charging rate, you get about 13 kilometers per hour of charging. Not too bad. If you're going 50, 75 kilometers a day, plug this in each night, you're going to be fine. That's all you need. We did get a 1450 plug put in. This is the same, same plug you use for your dryer and a lot of stoves use this kind of plug. 240 volts, 50 amps. Going to charge a lot faster. This adapter costs $44 from Tesla. Now we get 53 kilometers per hour charge. Charges much faster. A lot cheaper than buying the Tesla charger. You can buy this big charger that hard wires into your house. Charges a little bit faster. I think you probably get 60, 65 kilometers per hour charge, but that's 650 bucks extra. This is a lot cheaper. That's why 
you might want to go with these 240 volt outlets. USB ports and phone charging. Bit of a story here. My Tesla 3 came with two wireless charging mats in the center console. Fantastic. They're not here now. Let me show you. This is the wireless charging mat that came installed inside here. Unfortunately, my phone doesn't have wireless charging. All I needed was USB-C to charge with. Older Model 3s, I believe, came with a simple mat with USB connections, which for us would have been perfect. Fortunately, the wireless charging mat is easily removed. And also fortunately, you can buy USB cables like this one from Tesla on their webpage. Unfortunately, you need to buy both the lightning cable for iOS devices and the USB-C cable for Android devices. We own Android phones, so we'll only be using the USB-C cable and the lightning cable will be garbaged. Bit of a waste. Now I have the cables. Fortunately, the instructions make it look simple to install. No tools, unfortunately. The USB-C cable only fits on one side. Doesn't fit on here. Something about these little clips that doesn't allow the cable to sit nicely there. Fortunately, I'm easy going and I just installed it on the right. We only have one cable anyways. Would have liked to have two USB-C cables so we could both charge our phones at the same time. Unfortunately, this is what I'm left with. The wireless charging mat covered this unfinished plastic. I'm sure the Model 3s without the wireless charging had a nice mat that goes here. Can't buy this though, not from Tesla anyway. Fortunately, I worked in an office where we have some of this stuff. I measured and cut this thin rubber mat. So it kind of covers. And it looks reasonable, not bad. Unfortunately, the story isn't over yet. Fortunately, in this Model 3, built after June 2020, but before October 2020, where they included a whole new center console, there's both a USB-A port and a USB-C port way under here. Unfortunately, the USB-C cable that comes needs the USB-A port. And the Dashcam Sentry memory stick also requires a USB-A port. Previous Model 3s had two USB-A ports. Fortunately, there are third-party suppliers who try to help with these problems. I bought a USB hub from TapTez, I think that's how you pronounce it, to resolve this. It's this box down here. Unfortunately, it was quite a pain to line up the two ports on the back of the hub to fit very tight. Fortunately, I finally did it without breaking anything, and now I'm good to go. Whew. If you have a cell phone with wireless charging, probably like Medi does, you don't have to do anything, and you just use it as is. Makes things much easier. I find the Tesla really is a new paradigm in vehicles. Not only is it electric versus internal combustion engine, uh, just the approach Tesla took, bottom-up design, didn't conform to the usual ways that vehicles design things in, and how they control different things around the car. I'm not really all that bitter about the Chrome Delete. I'm buying a month before, I could have had nice black trim. Seriously. Really don't mean to whine about that. Um, really, that's what happens when you buy a cell phone. You buy a cell phone, a month later they come out with a new model. Again, same thing with the Tesla. So at least with the Tesla, you also get the software upgrades. Every month or two, you get a new update. You might get new features, they might fix things. The door opening and the delay connecting to the phone, I believe, have gotten a lot better since we first got the car. Bottom line is, we're very happy with the Tesla. We'll buy it again with joy to drive. Uh, and in the six months we've owned it, we've saved about $1,400 in gas. That alone feels really nice. I don't even know what the gas prices are these days because I, I only fill up when I use our other vehicles and we hardly ever do that. Any chance we get, we use the Tesla. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.